So you guys might not believe what I'm about to tell you, but I am not an organized person, whether it's my desk in here in the studio or the studio itself or my desk in the other part of the house or my email or my brain. I'm just not an organized person. I, I never have been. It's something I've always struggled with. In fact, um, when I woke up this morning, I knew I had to record a video for the channel, but I didn't know what the video was gonna be until I started going back to this self-hosted newsletter where I found a project that we're gonna to cover today. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right based on what the developer wanted when he built this project, but what we're gonna take a look at today is a Docker container called ToDuty. Now let's, let's be clear here. Like I have taken a look over the years at several different project management solutions, uh, whether it was back when I still had a nine to five and I was working for a web development company and the super over the top complex system that they used or, or some of the more simple stuff that we've taken a look at here on the channel. Um, I, I keep running into the situation where um, these, these project management systems, these to-do list systems are, are, are on either end of the spectrum where they're either super, super over, overly unnecessarily complicated with too much nonsense, or they're literally just a checklist of things to do and, and nothing more. And I really feel like uh, the, the project that we're gonna take a look at today called, again, to Duty, um, I feel like it really manages to find a sweet spot in between. And even though I've only been using it for a few hours, I'm really, really happy with it. So let's actually take a look at uh, my installation so you can see what I've got set up. We'll talk about that. We'll go through the GitHub repository, and then I'll show you how easy it is to get installed. Um, and I gotta say, not only do I appreciate how easy to Duty is, to use, I super appreciate how easy ToDuty is to install. Okay, so this is my ToDuty homepage. This is what I see when I first log into my demo instance here. Uh, it's in dark mode, but uh, it does have light mode. If we come down to the bottom left-hand corner, right above, right below, right above, right below my email address, uh, we can switch to light mode. But that that just sears the eyes. So dark mode it is even though I'm not, I, I would like to change some things about dark mode, but that that is a preferential thing for me. Um, basically, if we look at the URL bar, it says tasks uh, equals due today, right? So it's always going to pull up what you have due today. And I appreciate that. I think that is great. Now, I would, I would go so far as to say that some of this is wrong um, because like these three are due today, but the rest of them don't have a due date assigned to them. So I feel like they shouldn't be in here. They should probably be over here where it says maybe someday or something, but uh, these that don't have a due date of today probably shouldn't be here. Um, but that again, that is just a preferential thing for me. In fact, maybe uh, due date, priority name status, uh, yeah, there's really there's really nothing that you can do to eliminate those other than actually give them a, a due date. Um, so while we're here, uh, let's just take a look at the, the main part of the screen, then we'll jump over to the left part of the screen uh, with, with all the navigation and all of that. Um, so tasks, all tasks, you can, uh, again, you can sort um, by different uh, by different criteria that are already there. Uh, you can just create a new task. Um, this is a new task. Um, and then it just drops it to the bottom. And from here, you can add it to a project, you can add tags, you can give a status, a priority, and a due date. So um, so I think that's kind of cool. I dig how they've done that. You can then click update, or like we're gonna do, click delete. Um, and then it's gonna be like, hey, are you sure? Are you really sure you wanna do that? I am, so that's what we're gonna do. Now below that, we've got uh, we've got all of the different tasks that I have on my list. Uh, right now, uh, the, the first one that is in progress right there is do video research. And I did that, so I should actually change that to done um, and then say update task. And now it is gone because I've already done that task. Now we can say, hey, this one is actually for record video. We're doing that together. So we're gonna mark that as in progress. Um, we're gonna say that is medium priority because you know, it is. So again, I'm gonna click update and here we can see that this is updated. Uh, edit, upload, all of these other things um, are things that I will be doing later. They're not in progress, so I'm not too worried about that. But again, these really should have uh, task dates or due dates on them. Um, so we can just say today and click update. And again, this is, this is, let's go to today. Okay, so now that it's set for today, it's only stuff due for today. Cool, 
I think we all get how that works, right? Our inbox, um, I'm not sure why this exists, unless this is for something in the future. Uh, this gives us the opportunity to add, uh, we're gonna call this inbox task. Cool, so maybe that's what it's for, it's just a separate list of things to do. Again, I don't know why this is here. It doesn't really, doesn't really make sense to me. Um, so next, we've got next actions. Um, created at uh, due date. I think due date should be the default there for next actions. So you've kind of got a list of things, but again, this is kind of the same layout as today. Um, however, it does have everything listed out in chronological order of when it's actually due, um, but it keeps defaulting to when it was created rather than when it's due. So again, just some little things that I kind of wish were, uh, were, were, more, were more cohesive, but Again, I think these are things that the developer can tweak and fix and maybe make sense of for me. Um, maybe you too, I don't know. Um, but again, we've got upcoming, we've got someday, um, and we've got completed. So again, we saw that one already. Uh, all tasks, again, this is everything, which is kind of next actions as well, just in a different order. Um, so again, I think some of these can be removed or maybe maybe a little description up here at the top under whatever the title is to explain why that page exists and why it needs to exist and what its function actually is. Um, projects, again, I've got several different projects in here. Um, and we've got, uh, you know, like clean my desk, clean the studio, the video that we're working on right now, and a video that we've got coming up in the future of the Zima Cube Pro. Um, it's actually back there just sitting there right now. I've got things to say about it. Um, of course, you can add a new project. Um, you know, we can just do like demo project with uh, with a description. The area, uh, areas are kind of neat. Uh, it took me a minute to figure areas out, but basically if you've got, maybe you've got stuff for design, you've got stuff for development, you've got vi stuff for uh, video, you got stuff for audio, you got stuff for editing. You can create areas for each of those and then assign uh, your different projects to those different areas. Uh, so I kind of appreciate that. Uh, we're just gonna say, uh, we're gonna say no area and we're going to create a project. Now, one of the things that I wish uh, with this is I wish there was an, a, a way from right here to create a new area. And the reason for that is when you're creating a project, you might think about it after the fact. You know, like once you've, you've started creating that project, maybe you might be like, oh, this really needs its own area, this its own grouping, right? And there's no real clear way from here to add a new area. Unless you come over to this little plus sign right here, then you can create a new area. Um, and you can say like a demo area, right? Then you can come over to here. Uh, then you can go back to projects. Then you can go to demo project um, and you can then edit the project and go to demo area and click update. So now if we go to projects, we can see that demo project is now under demo area. So there are some workflow things that I would like to see maybe improved with some of this. Um, but again, a lot of this is preferential for me based on my experience with other project management and to-do list systems. So definitely let me know um, if, if you would like to see some modifications to the workflow on this as well, uh, just because I feel like maybe maybe this is an isolated inc incident of me being dumb. I'm totally willing to accept that, but I'd like to actually hear from you guys about that. And then there's notes. Uh, we've, we can, we've got different notes in here, like doing research. Um, so I've got this little this little thing here for the to duty uh, project, where it's like, I like to duty, even if the name is kind of funny. Or is it that I'm immature, which is again, 100% likely. Um, and then I've got a note in here for um, for the GitHub repository that we're gonna take a look at here in a minute. Uh, we can add tags, um, demo. And so you can do uh, things like that. And and then if you want to, to get rid of it, I guess. Uh, yeah, anyway. So it's got some tags on there so you can look at everything that has a specific tag. Again, this is gonna be great for, for more grouping stuff. Um, and of course you can click the plus and come right in here to new notes and create a new note that way and then assign it to a different or whatever project you happen to have available in your system. And then of course there's there's my email address down there. Uh, there's a profile button for some reason that doesn't do anything. Uh, and then there is a sign out option. And again, like we looked at before, we can toggle light mode and dark mode. Now, I guess one of the things I should have brought up initially is that 
Um, Taduti is a single user system, at least at the moment. Uh, it is one user. There is no email integration. There's no third party integration. Um, this is just a very, very basic, uh, just cut and dry um, kind of project management solution with grouping and projects and tasks. Um, so, so don't expect that you're going to be able to share this with other people, with other users, that sort of thing. That's not what this system is about, at least at the time of recording in late September of 2024. So that is that is to duty. Uh, that is that is how you use it. That is how you can go through and 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 create uh, projects and tasks and areas and all of that. It's very basic. And even though some of the workflow stuff doesn't make a ton of sense to me, I appreciate it for its simplicity. I really do. So with that said, let's take a look at how easy this is to get installed. If we jump over to their GitHub repository. Um, it just says, you know, to duty is a task and project management web application built with Sinatra. I dig that. Uh, currently has 95 stars. If you if you dig this project, definitely go give them a star. That would be cool. Um, they got two people watching, three forks. Um, and then, of course, they've got a point to uh, version point to uh, re uh, release on this. So technically, this isn't a, a full release based on versioning, but Again, this is one of those early projects that I think if it had enough people uh, with interest in it, that the developer might uh, be more inclined to do more with it, um, that sort of thing. You can see that it's been updated in the last couple of weeks, uh, which I super appreciate. It's been updated, you know, 10 months ago, seven months ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. So it's, it's something that is actively being worked on. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. If we scroll down a little bit farther. Uh, you know, to, 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 we read that first sentence already. It allows users to efficiently manage their tasks and projects, categorize them into different areas and track due dates. Uh, it's designed to be intuitive and easy to use, providing a seamless experience for personal productivity. And personal productivity is kind of the, the key thing there. Like I mentioned, this is a single user system. So that is, again, something to keep in mind there. This is this is for you. This isn't for you and your buddies. This isn't for you and your, your flatmates or whatever. This is for you. Um, so just keep that in mind. Again, they show light mode and dark mode. Features, task management. Uh, so you can create, update, and delete tasks. Many tasks are completed or mark tasks as completed and view them by different filters today, upcoming, and someday. Order them by name, due date, uh, date created, and priority. Uh, we've taken a look at that. We've got quick notes. We've got tags. We've got project tracking. You can order uh, or organize tasks into projects, and then each project can be organized, contain multiple tasks and or multiple notes. Uh, area categorization we took a look at. Uh, so grouping projects into areas for better organization and focus. Again, we, we talked about that with like design, development, audio, video, editing, all of that kind of stuff um, can be basically as examples, different areas of your setup. Due date tracking, responsive design. Now, uh, responsive design uh, shouldn't be here. Um, you know, in, in my previous video uh, or any previous video, we talked about how not all um, not all uh, applications need their own separate app uh, because most of them do a really good job of being responsive, meaning that you can look at them on your desktop or a tablet or a phone and everything looks good. So um, if we take a look at this, I'm going to drop this down to more of a like a, a responsive size here, a, a mobile size maybe. Um, and this this just falls apart. Um, it doesn't do well here. And in fact, I even I thought, well, okay, maybe maybe it's a viewport issue in the initial code, and maybe maybe it's looking for like on page load. It's looking for a specific frame size or or viewport size or something like that. And and if I refresh, it doesn't do us any favors there. I also decided, okay, well, let's take a look. Maybe it's looking for a web agent, um, you know, and maybe it's looking for a specific device. When I pulled it up on my phone, uh, I loaded the page and, and the home page or the login page didn't give me a lot of hope to start with. And then when I actually got logged in, it, 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 it again, it fell apart. It did not look good. And, and that's super unfortunate. Um, mostly, well, for two reasons. One, um, because um, because having a mobile first design theory is, is always the way to go when you're developing a new application, a uh, web-based application especially. But also because if we look at the GitHub repository, it says responsive design in progress. I see that it says in progress, but I, 
I would maybe reword this or or put this in a in an upcoming release kind of thing, maybe on a future a roadmap. Roadmap is the word I'm looking for. Maybe have that on a roadmap, but not as a current listed feature. So anyway, to, to move on, to get away from that, I don't want to talk crap about it. I know that this is still in early development, but just wanted to call attention to it. So uh, moving on, we've got getting started. There are some prerequisites here if you want to go this route. Uh, but if we keep scrolling down, uh, there is the option to run this. Uh, in Docker, uh, you can pull the the, the most current image. Um, I don't know that I would keep the, the actual version on there um, unless there are breaking changes in upcoming versions, which there may be. If that's the case, maybe put that on there for right now. Uh, in order to start the Docker container, you need at least, at, you, need, you need three environment variables. There are four here. <laughs> um, um, so email, password, so just the user email and password. Again, single user system, which I don't have a problem with. A session secret uh, for, for security reasons, and then an internal SSL enabled option. Um, so it says, please note, I'm generating a new SSL certificate inside the Docker file. There will be an option to create and link an externally generated one in the future. At this stage, I am doing this for simplicity. So just something to keep in mind. And if we scroll down, um, you can generate the session secret using this command in your command line or you can just use a password generator and generate a long string. Next, we've got this, this Docker run command. You could, if you wanted to, open up a, a terminal window and run this command as a Docker run. But again, I'm lazy, I like to keep things simple. So you can just grab this and head over to something like composerize.com uh, and just drop that in there. And then here we can see uh, that it does generate uh, a Docker Compose that we can use for this. So that's how we're gonna take a look at this, is we're gonna take a look at the Docker Compose over here in Portainer. Before we get into that though, I, I do highly encourage you to go over to the GitHub repository and dig through this project, look through the code, look through all of the notes and all of that kind of stuff to make sure that um, that any, any questions you might have have been answered either via the documentation itself, or if we come up here to the top and look at the issues, there are three issues here that have been open for a while. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be transparent about that. Um, but there are also eight closed tasks as well. Um, so, so definitely jump over here if you run into any issues. Make sure that your your issue hasn't already been answered again via via an issue or the documentation. Uh, if you do have something that hasn't been covered by one of those things, definitely open a new issue. But I think with that said, let's jump over to Portainer here. Um, let's take a look at my stack. And then we'll take a look. I was also looking at side quests. Um, that's actually where I realized that things can be too simple sometimes. Um, but anyway, if we take a look at this, we can take a look at the logs. Uh, here we can see uh, all of the stuff, all of the different logs in here, which I appreciate. So jump over to the editor. Uh, here we can take a look at our Docker Compose. Uh, we've got a service, which is just... <laughs> Here we've got a service, which is just to duty. Uh, we've got some environment variables of user email, user password, session secret, um, and internal SSL enabled. Um, so uh, your email address, your password, this could probably all be in uh, a .env file if you wanted to keep all of that stuff out of your Docker Compose. Um, but if you wanna do that, have that, nobody's gonna stop you. So uh, next we've got some uh, a volume just for where the local database, I'm guessing a SQL database is gonna be stored. We've got some ports uh, and then we've got our image of chrisvel slash to duty and then the tag of the most current version at this time, 0 0.20. So once you've got all of this set up with your username and your password and your custom session secret, um, you can then scroll down and click on the blue deploy uh, button that would be there. And then uh, you can just go over here and ooh, put in your username and password. And then you get logged in and then you can start creating areas and projects and um, tasks and to-dos and all kinds of different things in here to help yourself get more organized with regards to your, uh, with your little projects that you need to work on. I don't know, I said little projects. Maybe your projects aren't little like mine are. Maybe you've got big projects. I shouldn't judge, I apologize. So that is to duty. Um, again, it makes me it makes me giggle like I'm 12 every time I say the name of the project, but, um, 
definitely check out their project. I think it's cool. I hope that more people will check, take a look at this and um, and give it a star to help motivate them to keep working on this. But again, keep in mind, this is still early development. So um, things may break, things may change. Um, so if what you see in this video isn't what you see in a later release, again, things are likely bound to change just because that's how development works. So um, let me know what you think about this project in the comment section down below. I would love to hear more about your thoughts on that. Um, but yeah, I think with all of that said, I've covered everything I wanted to cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. And I guess I will talk to you guys in the next video.